Hi, welcome to the Boston Roll Channel. I'm your host, Brian Koval. Before we get started, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. If you want to see me play your favorite deck or your spicy brew on the channel, I take donation deck lists. I'll do a deck tech, play a full Magic Online League, and help tune your list. If that sounds good, check out my contact info. It's in the video description below. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome to the Boston Roll Channel. Today I've got some Pioneer for you. And this is a donation deck from Dylan. Dylan wants to relive some former standard glory with Electrostatic Pummeler. So this is a card from Kaladesh that when it enters the battlefield you get 3 energy. And you can pay 3 energy to give it plus X plus X where X is its power. So it doubles. And if you have other ways to get energy, you can double it then double it again. So we're talking exponential growth here. If for every three energy you get. And the dream is to just deal 20 in one gigantic smash with this. And naturally, you can jumpstart the process by giving it higher power than one when you activate it the first time. So this deck is full of ways to increase this thing's power and give it trample. So plus one, plus one trample, plus two, plus one trample, plus four, plus four trample. Uh, plus four plus two trample couldn't find that for a second apparently this belongs up with the lands thanks magic online all right yeah but so plus four trample plus four trample trample if it's four or greater and double strike so we're we have a lot of ways to just smash for lots of damage with big creatures here and everything else in the deck basically generates energy or protects the pummeler and most of these cards are reasonable on their own, which is the thing I like about this deck. Like, uh, Long Tusk Cub is a threat that they have to answer. Voltaic Brawler can get in damage. Bristling Hydra is actually really hard to kill. And this has a secret mode where it's just a 4-4 trample for 4. So, none of the cards in this deck are embarrassing on their own, and they work together really well. Uh, so, the de version of this list that Dylan sent me uh, I think was trying to be a little too clever. This is the version I've already cleaned up. Dylan had stuff like Cathartic Reunion. Uh, I, I imagine he probably like flooded out a few times and wanted something to do about that. He had some uh, Nephalia Academies in the sideboard, which is a card I've never seen before, by the way. It's a colorless land that if you would discard a card, you could put that card on top of your deck instead of the graveyard. And I think that playing cards like that it is tricking yourself into being too clever i think what you got to do when you're gruel is just smash so i replaced those sort of cards in the sideboard with just bigger creatures and more creatures like if you're playing against a deck that has like thoughtseize and fatal push and removal spells and you think you're gonna have a hard time getting a big pummeler across the finish line cut battle rage cut rush of Adve adrenaline and bring in just more big beef. Got the Gruul Spellbreaker, the Bristling Hydra, Aether Sphere Harvester, Glorybringer. Like, we can just turn into a regular Gruul deck without the combo. And I think that is a, a better way to go than trying to force the combo through in a matchup where it's hard to get through. So, that's it. And there's not a lot to say about a deck like this. We're just trying to pummel. I do have one important thing to say, though. This deck, look at this costs 15.31 tickets on Magic Online. You can be playing Pioneer for under $16 on Magic Online and under 100 in real life. So this is an extremely budget-friendly deck. Uh, that was not on purpose. I just noticed it once I uploaded the deck into Goldfish. I was like, 15 tickets, is that right? But turns out it is. This deck is dirt cheap and let's hope it can perform. Uh, there is at least one 5-0 in the history of pioneer with this list i did do some research to to look for card choices and uh it's capable of 5 owing. so let's see how it stacks up now let's go pummel some people i'm on the play which is good for this deck but this hand does not function off a single basic mountain so i'm gonna have to mulligan you keep most two landers yeah so i'm gonna keep this and i think that uh teamer battle rage is the bottom here. That's just the one that requires the most setup. Everything else is a creature on its own here. Even if they have some removal spells. 
I should check the deck and see if having green or red is going to be more important for a crag crown pathway. My instinct is green, but let me just check real quick. Because uh, Tune with Aether, Blossoming Defense, Snakeskin Veil are all single green spells. So if I spend two mana on a two drop and have a mana left over, I think I'd prefer it be green. So I am going to play Pathway as the back version. That's the wrong one. All right, Voltaic Brawler. Let's brawl. When it attacks, all right, it does not have haste of any kind. So if I draw a land, do I? Yeah, if I draw a land, I get to pummel. And Rampager plus all this energy is, would be pretty good. Even if I don't draw the land, I'll have Voltaic Brawler. I'm not going to buff. I want to store my energy. Because if I cast Pummeler now, that'll take me up to 5 energy. And if I draw a red source next turn, I can play Voltaic Brawler, getting me up to 7 energy and Rampage which Rampager makes it a 5, double to 10, double to 20. So a red source off the top represents a 20 power pummeler. All right, deck. We got to do this right now. Bummer. All right, so I can just kill this thing. Or I can... So I have a 10 power pummeler anyway. So I can Rampage, pay three, and I can get in. Yeah, I'll get in with both. And I'm going to pump the Brawler this time. So the great thing is they have to block Pummeler or they just lose. I guess they don't quite just lose. They go to three. All right, and they're in a lot of trouble for next turn. I have two lethal threats plus a tramp, a way to grant trample and a removal spell. Wow, this this mana base. Oh, they're all snow forests, but they are almost every art that exists. They just need a cold snap one in there. All right, so destroying destroying Steel Leaf Champion will remove Ronus. So uh, I think I want to do that. So I gain three energy, then I can pay four. If they have something like, uh, I'll pay four. Yes, that is the correct amount. If they had like a snakeskin veil or ranger's guile or blossoming defense, they could have, do they survive that turn if they do that? Yeah, then I have to set up for the next turn. Or I would have a 4488 trample and both of their things. No, they would actually be dead anyway. They would have to block each creature because they're both lethal with Rampager. And Voltaic Brawler is big enough to trample over a 5-5. Five five. Okay, yeah, so they were dead either way. All right, that went pretty well. So I imagine that um, Glorybringer and Magma Spray are both things I'm going to want in this matchup. Like, their draw that game, Magma Spray would have been pretty bad against. But I think that this deck is going to have elves and stuff in it, like ways to speed out those threats. Just like, their first play was a turn 3, 4, 5 on the draw. That's not going to do it here. So, how do I want to... 
Like Glorybringer is locked 100%. I actually think I want Aether Sphere Harvester too. And then Magma Sprays are the next round. I think Battle Rage has the lowest. The lowest floor. Extremely high ceiling, but also really low floor. Shadow Spear. The Lifelink on Shadow Spear is really good. Uh, I think I can cut some Snakeskin Veils. Like, Mono Green isn't known for its removal suite. Uh, Alright, so I have the four cards I definitely want in represented. So can I find four more responsible cuts to make room for these Magma Sprays? I could cut Rush of Adrenaline. But I do think that like punching through some creatures is going to be part of this game plan. Like if they get their fat creatures in play, I'm going to have to trample through like trade up and get like three or four damage through on a trample. All right, so this is done. Maybe I'll just bring in two Magma Sprays, just a little more removal than I had before, and then if they show me a bunch of Elves and Burning Tree Emissary. Is that card banned in this format yet? I don't know. Uh, but if they show me more targets for Magma Spray, I can make a change for Game 3, if there is a Game 3. Alright, another Mulligan. This is a 20 land deck. Alright, I was about to say, but a tune with Aether does a lot of heavy lifting. So I'm going to keep this. And I'm going to send one of my Rampagers to the bottom. So a tune can go find Mountain and ch fill up the energy pool. All right, yeah, no surprise there. Elvish Mystic is, in fact, a card in this deck. Okay, that's actually better. So I can play that now, get my two colors set up, and I can attune later if I need to. All right, what thick monster do you have? All right, that one I can harness lightning. So this one draws cards somehow. Uh, look at when it deals combat damage to a player. Look at that many cards from the top of your library. Reveal, reveal a Garrick Planeswalker card or a creature. Okay, yeah. So this draws cards. This is a no. I'm glad it wasn't Steel Life Champion because I can't kill that one with Harness Lightning. Just a squeaky clean little one for one. So my top end creatures actually can tangle with green stompy creatures. Old growth troll. When this dies, if it was a creature, return it to the battlefield. As in, it's an aura with enchant forest you control and enchanted forest has tap add green green and one tap sack this land create a 4-4 four, four troll. Alright, so it's a 4-4 four, four troll that later will be another 4-4 four, four troll. That's pretty good. Okay, so I have a lot of red mana here. I I could Voltaic Brawler plus Shadow Spear. Or I could Voltaic Brawler plus a tune and play and equip spear next turn, like a surprise lifelink. Or I could Brawler plus a tune this turn. Rampage your next turn, and then Shadow Spear the turn after that. I think I like that. I want to sit on the Shadow Spear for a little while. want it to be a little bit of a surprise. We're up to four energy. That's enough to pummel. Uh, the pummeler brings three energy, so I have a double pummel in the on the stack here just waiting to get loose so i don't know what top end this deck has like are they just a straight up green creature deck do they have nykthos do they have karn the great creator uh, there's a variety of places this deck could be going all right the great henge is a extremely powerful card Uh, 
Uh, so they're going to gain two life a turn guaranteed, and then they could also just be drawing tons of cards. Glorybringer is excellent. So do I want to play my 4-4? Four, four? I think I want to attack. And I'm not going to spend energy. I feel like I'm going to have to pummel through pretty hard to get through this Great Henge at some point. So I'm just sitting on the energy for now. Just Gore Clan Rampager in 4-4 mode. Glory Bringer's bringing up the top end. Shadow Spear can gain a lot of life. Shadow Spear might actually outrace Great Henge. It depends on how many creatures they're able to chain together and draw cards versus just tapping to gain two life. Because nine mana gain two life every turn sucks, but nine mana draw five cards gain two life every turn is really good. I'm not going to mess around with this old growth troll. Like, I, I want to be active in combat. Well, that is larger than Glorybringer can cook. It is not larger than a Shadow Speared Gore Clan Rampager, though. All right, attune with Aether. So if I Glorybringer this turn, or I could equip Shadow Spear. And if I'm going to Shadow Spear, I should also attune. This costs three total to cast and equip. If I don't attune, though, then I can cast, equip, they trade, equip again. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Equip. So I can make their things lose indestructible and hexproof, which might they might actually have some things that fit that bill in this deck. So green, green, red, red, double green, double or triple green, double red. So I think I want a red source here. So now I have three green and three red. Let's keep it mixed up. Move this over to the brawler. So now I can threaten a, a bigger blocker here. And next turn I can attune and glory bringer. Getting Shadow Spear on Glory Bringer would be bananas. That's an eight life swing every turn. Yeah, this great henge is going to bury me though. Wow. Okay, I guess I did show them uh, electrostatic pummeler, so it's not like a random card. It's a pretty important artifact to kill. All right, now we're just in the pits. Uh, so I might, do I bring in Cinder Vines just for Great Henge, or do I try to control their creatures? I don't think I want Cinder Vines against this deck. All right, I, I've lost this game, but I'm going to stick around a little longer and see if they show me more, like Karn or something I should be aware of. Old Growth Troll is sweet, though. This is a brand new card from Call Dime. The stats on this are undeniable. It's just uh, you have to be mono green to support it. And this deck certainly does the trick. This feels like a fight Hydra. Oh, even worse, Primal Might. 9, 15. Oh, bummer. They couldn't get one more damage over the board, over the finish line here. I'm at 1. 
I'm not going to show them Glorybringer because it's not lethal and I don't want them thinking about it for game two. All right. They got me. Great Henge, too good. Like, without Great Henge, A, obviously, it drew them two cards, but the plus one counter, this being 6-5 instead of 6-4, was the difference between Glorybringer and not. So, very big deal there. Uh, Magma Spray. I guess that, that asks the question, do I want to fight over their enablers or fight over their payoffs? Primal Might's a big, big ham. Aether Sphere Harvester, the flying matter is though they've shown me Rex Age now. Cindervines is just so bad. All it does is it's a three mana disenchant for Great Henge. And it doesn't do anything else. Like most of their deck is creatures, it's not gonna get incidental damage in. If I bring in my Magma Sprays, where do they go? Could replace the Harvesters, but I don't think I want to do that. Alright, I'm actually off Magma Spray. It is what it is. On the play, I want to be more proactive than that. I want to be attacking. So, what does an attacking deck look like? Do I need my TBRs back in? All right, just no magma spray is that better so i have all my rampagers i have my collision colossus yeah i think just ramming over their creatures on the play is a better plan can i get the rush of adrenaline back in uh, blossoming defense does a similar thing the trample matters obviously but i'm not going to cut blossoming defense against anyone with any spells in their deck basically that card is great I'm going to submit this deck. So from the main deck, we're basically down to Snakeskin Veil, vale, up to Glorybringer. All right, we got a Keeper. First Long Tusk Cub appearance. It's time to get Rowdy. Noteworthy, uh, there is no Pummeler and no Battle Rage in this hand, but we are able to apply pressure pretty quickly. Though if they go Elf into 4-4, four four, this hand falls off pretty quick, though the Rampager does get over the, the finish line a little. Wow, no Elf is always the first checkbox. Right, playing this as a green source for the reasons I described earlier. All right, let's draw some lands. Just like three lands in a row from this spot. Or at least two. Give me at least two lands in a row. Would be great. Just get up into these four drops. Wow, what's going on over there? They're just showing up for... Uh, Return three, I guess. Missing that land drop hurt. Sticking a pummeler here would have been insane. But I can make Cub a 4 4 now. A cub is the one that permanently turns energy into power, unlike every other card in the deck. Steel Leaf Champo. Alright, deck. Come on. Land. It's time for the land. Uh, that's not a land. So. Both of these kill Still Leaf Champion with the help of Gore Clan Rampager, so I'm just going to keep powering through. Do I want to pay? Uh, this becomes six, so no, I don't. I think I might juice up the cub if they don't do anything else. Yeah, I'm just here to pound, and I'm going to leave up these Blossoming Defenses, because I think that lining up a Primal Might is one of their better plays here. Like, pushing for extra damage when it's not lethal and taps me out, I'm not interested in that. 
Just tap out for Primal Might. Ooh, Collected Company. I wasn't expecting that, but it makes sense. They have a lot of powerful things that cost three. Yeah, that could actually... Oh, they missed. Wow. I'll take that. All right, now it's really time for a land. There we go. Okay, so now I can do two things. I can make this... So if I make this a 4-3, then Blossoming Defense saves it from Harbinger, but not from Champion. Uh, if I make this a 5-5, five, five, Blossoming Defense saves it from both. It's actually already safe from both. So I think that I want to attack and use Brawler. Yes. So my tricks are just extremely powerful here, and they're dead if they don't walk. And they're going to start losing material quickly if they do block. Okay, so I lined up the Blossoming Defense to save this under these circumstances. So that'll be a 6-5. That'll do. And I'm going to Rampage this one. All right, so my things are all still alive. You take a bunch of damage to get more energy. All right, you have four forests in play and two lethal attackers facing down. All right, we did it. I'm on the draw in round two against some sort of Gigantha th strategy. Uh, so we know this isn't mono green. Uh, it could be some sort of Rakdos or Jun sack deck. My hand is another no lander. So playing with 20 lands uh, in a, a deck without cantrips, other than a tune with Aether, uh, is we, we are playing with fire. We are going to have to mulligan sevens. This is a f three out of four games. We had to mulligan the seven. But we do want to play on a light land count. So this is the old... Uh, Playing with fire, hand from standard. You keep Aether Hub, which can cast a tune with Aether, which finds the second land and also fuels Aether Hub. So this is a good time. All right, the uh, Abzan Triome. All right, so here we go. We get the energy. Get green. Get more energy and more green. And boom. <laughs> and we're online. We have a pretty nice straight line on a, a big pummeler here. Even have snakeskin veil. I guess the question is if I want to play off curve or not to protect Pummeler with the Veil. I'm up to 4 energy now. Six. So I actually, I do have 20 damage here, 20 trample. Though these, this spread of colors is somewhat concerning. Alright, they just wish Gigantha into their hand. I hope I draw another threat. Alright, sweet. That's what I wanted. Uh, was just looking for like any other threat to test their removal before I sneak this pummeler in. Like I I couldn't afford to take the turn off. If I didn't draw anything, I probably would have just jammed pummeler. But I do need to get on board, and I can make this cub a four four. Like if they have some sort of damage based removal, that is the thing I can do. It sucks up all my Pummeler en energy, but connecting with it gets two of it back. Actually, that's pretty good. So if they, like, uh, Lightning Strike this or something, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of some three damage burn spell. 
make it a 4-4. Four, four. I have zero energy. Attack, I go up to two energy. Aether Hub makes it three, and then Humbler makes it six. And you can also harness lightning a creature and choose to zero, do zero damage just as a uh, energy ritual. Because the way this card works is you get three energy, then you may pay any amount of energy, and harness lightning deals damage equal to, to a creature equal to the amount of energy you paid. So you can just target your own thing, get three energy, and say zero. But all, so this is kind of a pump spell when pump, comboed with Pummler. All right, so now I have multiple points of protection for my Pummler, and I have a real threat in play, so I'm pretty excited about this. Yeah, Long Tusk Cub uh, can definitely create difficult game states to navigate all on its own. I'm just going to let it connect. I'm not going to make the first move here. If they try to play a removal spell, then I'll respond. Exile target permanent. Uh, not on my watch. So this is probably uh, Niv Delight. So I'm just doing some Pummler math here. I think I can put one more counter on this and still have uh, enough to pummel twice next turn. So because they're a Gigantha deck, I actually know they can't have Supreme Verdict. That's pretty cool. All right. What do you got? It has to... To kill, kill all these creatures. Oh, I actually could have pumped again. Omnath, okay. Pretty sure I can beat that. Oh no, they had the full fetch land combo wombo, so they could also bring to light. Jesus. All right, so five color bring to light. Are they getting Niv or are they getting a removal spell of some kind? What do you got for me? The fuck is this? Oh, it's Valky. Okay. Oh, that still works. <laughs> okay, yeah, whatever. Exile target, artifact or creature, then you can play those. Okay, sure. Walkie's gone. Or right, that's gone. So interesting to note, if I had just let them kill Long Tusk Cub and played Pummeler with the thing up, I would be doing uh so two, three, four, eight. Double, double. Yeah, I would be super lethal if I had just let them kill Cub and then protected my Pummeler. So definitely worth noting that. So I think attacking Tybalt makes more sense than... Though, do I have a lethal attack if I go face? Uh, so probably not because I don't have Battle Rage. So I can go... Uh, 4, plus 4, 8, 12, 13, 14. Uh, technically 15. So I can go 15 face. Yeah, so I guess I should attack Tybalt. Let's see if that or Omnath is more important to them. I can get both. Target creature gets plus 4, plus 2, and Trample. Can take out both of those things. And Cub is still able to become an 8 8. And I can protect it. Let 
They do have five cards in hand in their control deck, though. I'm not excited about. All right, that's a lot of damage they can absorb. So one of my trample effects would be a big deal. I'd be really surprised if they didn't jump here. Yeah, I, I definitely should have just let that resolve and then went in on Pummeler. I, I lost sight of my combo deck route and was just trying to play the aggro deck. So they can bring another Valky in here and then I lose. All right. Okay, yeah, that's fucked up. I, I forgot I don't play a lot of Pioneer and uh, that is still a thing that works. That the Cascade rule did not change how Bring to Light works. Okay, so Bristling Hydra comes with its own Hexproof. Glorybringer can fly. Is Spellbreaker better than Glorybringer, though? In Hexproof on uh, your turn is pretty good. And yeah, uh, like just their deck's going to have a lot of removal. So I do also have to just beat this Valky combo. Yeah, blew, blew it with the, the Pummeler, and I don't think that um, comboing is the best plan here. So I think Shadow Spear probably isn't very good. The Harness Lightning, Omnath is important to get rid of, and like Niv is important to get rid of just as big creatures, but there's not a whole lot of targets. I think I need to keep the TBRs though. Like that's just too juicy. That's the kind of card that can win a game out of nowhere. Actually, uh, coll collision can destroy Niv. A deal six to target creature with flying. All right, so the front half of that still deals with Niv. Glorybringer can kill Omnath, but not Niv. Alright, one more card's gotta go. Rampage is important. Maybe it's Rush of Adrenaline. I'm keeping in all of my hexproof stuff, because they were those were great. Let's see if they're still a Gigantha deck. Alright, they are still a Gigantha deck. They didn't board in Supreme Verdicts or anything, so. Still good there. Uh, my hand's a keep. So I can play Sheltered Thicket, or I could attune, jump ahead on energy, so a Long Tusk Cub is a 3-3 on turn 2. And then if I draw lands, I could cycle the sh Thicket later, just to keep more action coming. Because I did flood out a little bit last game. But... I think just playing it straight here and just putting my land into play, tapped when it doesn't really matter, is still just correct. Yeah, so I can cub this turn, attune, second cub next turn, can also attack for three with the attune energy. Do you have Dreadbore? Just like that. Oh, Fatal Push. Sure. That's also a legal card in the format. I right, get a forest. Play my cub. Three cub. Yeah, that, that push was good. That slowed me down a bit. Uh, though, if I draw a land at any point, we're, we're into Hydra Town. And Hydra's very hard to kill. Just drown in the lock. 
Oh, it's just Valky as Valky. Sure. So they can steal one of my four drops. I can pick off the Valky with Harness Lightning and just get it back if I care. Yeah, the front half of Valky is actually pretty reasonable. The back half, slightly unreasonable. Shadow Band in four mats. So I have a pretty easy attack here. And I am going to juice up. So do I kill Valky now? I guess if I don't, they can turn it into a Hydra in response at any point. You're a 2-1, right? Yeah, okay. If I did that before combat, I actually could have got more damage in, but I think it's okay. I can use that energy later. Presumably, if there is a later. I love Niv Delight, by the way. Like, I think this deck is so cool. I'm not sure if how I feel about being able to bring Delight for Valky, but I do think that is pretty great. Wow. Plus one, plus one for each color among permanents you control. So it's a 2-2 two, two on the face for each color among permanents. All right. So that's going to make a shitload of mana in the near future. If they're still alive that long. And based on how this game is going, they will be. Yeah, so this is two, three, four, five, six. Uh, did they? No, they did not miss a land drop. I missed a land drop. Ooh, Pummelerino. I don't have the fourth land to make that sing. So, do I push for damage? How much damage can I actually do here? So, 3, 4, 5, 9. I can deal 9. I think I have to play Pummeler. Uh, I don't like it, but yeah, here's Pummeler. Uh, if I had a fourth land, I, I would be pretty locked to win this game, I think. But right now, this is just wide open. And they just drew this card, so they could probably do something insane with Omnath this turn. Though black is the color Omnath isn't, so to cast Omnath, they would have to make their land drop before they played. Alright, that's kind of awkward for them, but I'll take it. Deputy. Oh, they are ignoring Pummeler. Though this does tap for three now for... So they're not necessarily ignoring it. They're just letting me have it. Yeah, this Vigilance creature can attack before it taps for mana, so we have not successfully gotten to my turn yet. It's pretty cool they gave that card Vigilance. I have a stack of these actually that I, I bought on the pre-order because I thought it was just like probably going to be an EDH staple eventually. Alright, time to draw a land deck. Thank you. Needed that last turn, but I drew Pummeler last turn, so it's not like if I drew the land, I would have had Pummeler. All right, let's see if Bristling Hydra with 11 energy can win this game on its own, because that's where we are. Can't abrupt decay this. Can't, uh, whatever that Vindicate card is. Can't Jabalt it. Can't Dreadbore. Omnath is pretty good though. 
This Fate Burrow Elder is so fucked up. Yep, had the fetch land again. This deck is really good. Omnath is messed up. Like, this Nib Delight was a deck I seriously tested for uh, Pro Tour Phoenix. It, and that was before they printed Omnath or Valky. And those are both huge upgrades to so just go straight into this deck. Oh, there's that. What's the damage? They're thinking about it. You're not going to resolve your trigger. Yep, still haunted by that game one where I just uh, didn't keep track of what mattered correctly. Ooh, extinction events in their deck. Bring to light. That was actually a pretty bad niv. It only got two spells, but one of them is bring to light, which is obviously very powerful. Dreadbore doesn't work on this. I can gain Hexproof. Though they have a lot of power in play at this point, a lot of power and toughness, and it's going to be really hard for me to get through. 17. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. <laughs> Not quite. Six, ten, eleven, sixteen. They do have lethal, and I don't. Wow. But they're going to have to block with something, so. Actually, do they even block? Do they care? If they don't block here, I just lose. Okay, they're piling up. So. Definitely Omnath first is the blocking order I want. And then Rampage. So that's nine. You need 11 toughness at the end of the turn, or at the end of combat. Nine, 10, 11 with Blossoming Defense. And then I still have energy up to give it Hexproof next turn. Yeah, that is the correct amount. They gave me a lot of credit for that attack, though. <laughs> if they just no blocks. I guess they lose the TBR. And that's not something you want to do. And these resources barely matter because they can just bring to light for another Niv, refill their hand. Or bring to light. I guess Valky doesn't really help here. Because I can still Hexproof. But we've seen Extinction Event in the deck. And their creatures both cost odd. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not winning this game at all. I guess I can give them a chance to screw up. And me to top deck but Team or Battle Rage. Them shocking in uh, a shock land when they already have so much mana is scary. Yeah. There's the extinction event, and my even cost creature lines up poorly with all their odd cost creatures. And back up Omnath. So the card in their hand is Dreadbore which is very good against my deck. Uh, plus they get a cantrip. I'll take one more draw step, then I'll concede. And they still have Gigantha here. So yeah, they, I got uh, overpowered here. Missed a window to combo off in game one. I, I was just focused on the wrong thing. And then now we lose. All right. Yeah, that matchup's always going to be tough. They're doing an actual broken thing, and, and we're just uh, playing in the sand over here. I'm on the play with a hand that has several lands, but no creatures, against a Yorion strategy. So I'm going to mulligan this. I feel like I'm going to have to get on board against Yorion. Oh no. 
<laughs> the dreaded double attune mountain hand. Okay, this is a keep. So I'm going to send a rush of adventure. And so the choice here is, do I want to ride my cub off the double hexproof spell or have Rampager as another creature later? But I think that's pretty easy to just take the cub. Because the, the Rampager doesn't do anything unless cubs in play or I have four mana, both of which are... Uh, Quite a ways away. All right, backup cub. So now I can ram this one in fearlessly. Even if I get fatal pushed, I have a backup. And if I draw a green source, then the plan's online. And if they just don't have a fatal push, we're in good shape. Wow. All right. Yep. Trial of Ambition is a good one. I well, didn't draw the land, so let's hope they don't have more of that. This deck is probably chock full of removal, though. Oh my god. It got changed to the rocks. Alright, we probably lose now. Malta 5. Alright. Round 3. Continue the rowdiness. You have three spot removal spells. Yes. Fuck. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. Um, and now Yorion's around to blink the Trial of Ambition. All right. Yeah, yeah. That, that was quick and painful. Uh, so... Yeah, if I didn't maul, obviously, that would have been better, but I did, so there it is. Okay, so I think I want my Spellbreakers. I don't think I'm going to count on pummeling particularly effectively against that much removal. So going wide probably makes more sense than going big. I think Battle Rage... Like, Battle Rage still represents a lot of lethal potential. Like, if I leave in some sort of banger spell, that's the kind of one I'm looking for. Hydra. I think I want the Hydras. And maybe a Collision Colossus is worse. Actually, these are pretty comparable, though Rampager is also a 4-4, as the, the flavor text of being a 4-4. I don't think that uh, Shadow Spear is going to matter a lot in this matchup, so I can maybe get a Battle Rage back. Though Collision Colossus does smash Yorion. That's the creature mode Yorion. Oh, Harnessed Lightning seems mediocre. I can move this around. So I can get my Collision Colossus back, add Aether Sphere Harvesters, and Cinder Vines. Cinder Vines could be pretty good, actually. All right, I'm going to try this. So let's try to keep seven. Because my opponent has demonstrated in game one, they're already exploding with removal spells. And the deck probably got better after board. Chain to the Rocks in this uh, four color deck is kind of sus, though. But it worked out, so good job. So I think I'm going to play the Sheltered Thicket even though I have four lands, because four is such a magic number that's come up a number of times now that like playing my four drop on time, playing Pummeler with backup, like all of those things matter. 
So I, I do want to just make all my lands. Nix Fleece Ram. Bah, Ram you. The Rampager is pretty interesting. Like, I could... I think I want to play Spellbreaker, though, and just get in. Like, I'll play a Haste to Spellbreaker. Haste. Like, I want to pressure this ram. Playing creatures without haste here. Oh, I think that's wrong. So they save one damage now to let me grow my long tusk hub permanently or gain more energy. Yeah, so playing something without haste there basically means this ram uh, gains one, two, three life for the turn, and I don't get any energy. So that felt like the most forward momentum. Glass pull mimic, they're going to get another ram. All right, so it might be a rampager turn. Oh, TBR. So between rampager and battle rage, I might be able to kill both these ramps this turn. Yeah, so I Rampager this, and then I buff this twice. Oh, I don't have... <laughs> whoops. I don't have energy anymore to do that, so uh, I guess I'll just Battle Rage this. Double Strike and Trample. All right, yeah, <laughs> definitely miscalculated that a little bit, but I still think that attack is fine. It's clearing out the sheeps. Oh God. So this can morph. Sack an enchantment, one plus, so they can get a three drop creature at the end of the turn by sacking this next fleet's ram. This is fun. It's probably bad for me, but I like it. Uh, Yorion is still over there, so keep track of that. Yeah, so they have to get a creature, so they can't go up enchantments. But I assume there's like, I don't know, like a Fleshbag Marauder kind of effect in the deck at three, or a mana war of some kind. I don't know, we'll see. This is another enchantment. Okay, yeah, Skyclave Apparition certainly qualifies. All right, so just continue attacking. So, do I... Yeah, I think I pummel. I'll present a threat that demands an answer. And I have a second one. Path to the World Tree. Wow, that's sweet. I'm so jealous of their deck. And that's an enchantment they can sack for Incarnation. Now they have a mountain... Oh, they already had a mountain, so chaining to the rocks was already an option. All right, so we can sack the world tree, get another apparition, if nothing else. Wish I had a snakeskin veil. Yep. All right, they respect the pummeler. I like that. Ha ha! 
Double block. Please double block. Coward. And Pummeler, this time with Snakeskin Veil protection. Snakeskin Veil is just a huge upgrade to Ranger's Guile. Like, they're basically the same card, except uh, Veil, you get to keep plus one, plus one forever. And Ranger's Guile is plus one, plus one till end of turn. So, big upgrade from Caldime for decks like this. Like, they're functionally identical on your combo turn, but... Any earlier, or like if you're gonna play more turns than that, this is just so much better. That's cool. You can turn your mana confluence into a mana confluence that doesn't hurt you. All right, so they go for that. I have the veil. The cool thing is, hexproof lasts until end of turn. So even if they sack Omen of the Sea for another Skyclave Apparition, uh, my Pummeler is still Pummel Proof. So they would need to find something that interacts with Pummeler on my turn. Or something that makes it so it can't attack at all. I don't know. They could just get another Apparition. Renegade Rallyer. Oh, that's so cool! Renegade Rallyer, getting back Ram. Uh, their deck is so fucking sweet. I don't think it's going to matter, though. So, time to do some math. 2 plus 4 plus 4 is 10. Uh, times 2 is 20. Times 2 is 40. Yeah, they're fucked. And I do have exactly enough energy to do all that. I suspect they're going to put everything in front of Pummeler. I guess it depends on how much they uh, re so like there is some push and pull here because apparition if this pummeler is not outright lethal blocking with apparition is bad because then I can like if they do like a quadruple block I end up with creatures and they don't which they might lose to anyway. But as it stands, they're just going to get pummeled. Oh, here they come. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 40 minus 14 is still lethal, it turns out. So, all right. Uh, red, green, rampage, green, red, rampage. Bang. Bang. That'll do. 40-40 creature trample. Alright, we did it. Over the finish line. So... Their deck did seem kind of more creature creaturey than I expected. I don't have just like return to nature in this deck or any way to really answer enchantments, which seems like what their deck is actually doing. But Gruel Spellbreaker was great that game. Just the 3-3 three, three haste kept steady pressure up. They had to make some early blocks and I got some uh, good trade-ups with my removal spells. Uh, oh, Cinder Vines is already in the deck. I'm over here like, I don't play any disenchants, but <laughs> it's because I already boarded them in. Smart. Glorybringer does seem like it could be relevant. Yeah, now that I've seen Skyclave Apparition and like an engine to go find them, that sort of thing looks pretty good. Battle Rage was great. The Hexproof things are obviously great. I think maybe the uh, Collision Colossus is the, the worst card left. Maybe I don't need all four Hydras, because I do want to pop off with Pummeler if I get a window. Actually, Aether Sphere Harvester doesn't matter. It's a flying threat, but the the ram seems like 
Yeah, like, I, I don't want to settle into some sort of like controly game here, though the flying threat is really good. Oh, no, this is tough. Tough calls. Oh, I'm bringing in glory bringers to replace, so I still have flying threats. All right, let's do it. Unfortunately, Harness Lightning doesn't line up well against any of the uh, important creatures I saw. Like the Ram. All right, looks like we're taking another mulligan. 20 land deck strikes again. Come the fuck on. All right, well, we mulled to five again. It didn't go well last time. So I'm going to get rid of the... Uh, Pomp spells, combat tricks, because I need creatures before combat tricks matter. Yeah, this is not the kind of hand that wins a game. So even with 20 lands in the deck, like one in three cards in the deck is a land. An opening seven should, like on average, have two lands. Like That's exactly the number of lands we want. So I'm feeling like a lot of these mulligans are, are pretty brutal. Long Tusk Cub. Yes! <laughs> Always shout out the name of the card you want to draw. All right, so now we actually have something resembling a plan. Like the cub will demand them to respond, or at least take some action. All right, cub's going to get rowdy at least once. All right, that was pretty good, actually. Finding the fourth land in time. If I play Aether Hub, I can make Cub a 3-3 before combat. But I think having a stockpile of energy for Bristling Hydra is going to be worth a lot more than getting in for one extra damage when my opponent's at 20. So they can play the Enigma thing if they have it. Binding of the Old Gods. Destroy target non-land permanent. Okay. Goodbye, Cub. All right, it's Hydra time. Hail Hydra. And we drew the fifth land for Glorybringer as well, so we got game to play here. All right, Hydra with two Hexproof Bubbles. So they have shown me that uh, trial of Make You Sacrifice as a card in their deck. Just hope they don't have it. Oh, I haven't seen this in a format with uh, dual lands or shock lands yet. Just this thing searching up a breeding pool is pretty messed up. I've only played this card in Call Time Limited, and there are a cycle of dual lands, the the snow duels that come into play tapped. So pretty close to breeding pool actually, but that's a nice card in constructed. All right. Can you easily answer Hydra with an Edict, or can you not answer Hydra at all? Because it's unbeatable. Renegade Rally are doing the cool ramp thing. Do they have another Rallyer? Keep ramping. Do their creatures get Death Touch is the final chapter of that. There's so many permanents. They easily have the City's Blessing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, City's Blessing. Deputy of Detention. Non-land permanent in opponent controls. All right, so just bristle up. I have Hexproof. So do I want to bring Glory now? Or is that something for a later turn? I guess I can deny them a, a clean double block if I glory bring now. Attack and exert. Take that out. Yeah, so luckily the... Uh, Binding will be gone before they can Yorion, because they do have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. If their hand makes a land drop, they can Yorion right now. And so clearing Renegade Rallier is a big deal for that. The Deputy 
they can blink that and remove glory bringer but hydra is still staying strong they're at nine life over there it's there's only one thing that can target X proof. And incarnation. All right, so they can get another three drop in their end step. But just like last game, hex proof lasts until the end of the turn. So let's see what they can do here. Oh, they could get that uh, copy changeling or copy ally, whatever that card is. A rallier gets back what Nylea's presence and draws a card. Okay. Pump spell. Shit. All right. Well, I'm gonna attack with my Hydra. See how much they want to respect this attack. I have ten trample power that they don't necessarily know about. Oh, they're just putting the whole squad up. Three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So all of those die, and my thing lives no matter how I stack these blockers. They were right to block with at least one, though, because they would have died. All right. I mean, it's tenuous. They have worked through all of my hexproof bubbles. My creatures are tapped. They have their engine online. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They can Yorion right now. Uh, they have a lot to like going on right now. Yeah, so they can Yorion blinking Nylea's presence, which draws a card. And then they can sack the presence. Actually, I wonder... No, yeah, they have to stack their stuff correctly, but yeah, so they can get Nylea's presence, then Yorion. I need to find a pump or a removal spell to get through this Yorion, because Glorybringer's not going to do it on his own. And they stack their triggers correctly, so they actually do have an enchantment. Ugh. This is going to be just like a little bit short, I think. Need glory need to draw one of my pump spells. Battle Rage does the thing. Voltaic Brawler. Uh you're a turn too late. I would have had three energy if I had this last turn. So I can attack with Glorybringer and make get a 4-4 four -four token out of the apparition. Or I can attack with Glorybringer and trade off with Yorion. So if I attack Exert, I don't think there's a world where I don't attack. So do I think that removing their 4-5 and leaving them with a 2-2 two -two and me with a 3-2 is better than them having a 4-5 and not a 2-2 two -two versus my 4-4 four -four and 3-2? Oh, And do I think they can recur and go off with Yorion is another part of the question. Like removing Yorion from play, there's a lot to like about that. Ooh, this is this is something. I think I'm just gonna kill the apparition. Just enjoy my four four. And then continue to hope to draw pump spells. Yeah, it looks like they're going to narrowly get through this one. Right, they're cycling triomes. That's good. Means their hand's not great. Oath of Chandra shit. All right, that kills Brawler. No! 
We tried so hard and got so far. I was one hexproof bubble away from winning this game. Like, if I had two more energy or just had a uh, a snakeskin veil or blossoming defense in hand, just again, this was a mall to five. So we're talking about like things that are reasonable to have in the deck if I had just slightly more resources. So the mall to five twice against this deck full of removal turned out to not be so great. And we're dead. Okay. Bummer. Close. So close. And yeah, maybe this deck should just have more of the the Ranger's Guile kind of effects in it. Like, I have six total right now. Maybe it should have seven or eight. I don't know. Uh, that's, that's a metagame decision, but would have mattered there a lot. On the draw against some sort of Lurus deck, uh, this hand <laughs> takes me back. Uh, this is a keep with the uh, mono energy hand. Laris deck with choked estuary and snow covered island. I wonder if this is like some sort of mill deck or if it's a control deck. Uh, whatever it is, it would be a nightmare to get this attune spell pierced. All right, good. Dodge that one. So that revealing for choked estuary. I mean, if they play opt here, all right, yeah, okay, that makes sense. I was just thinking, like, what is the cost benefit of revealing for choked estuary? Like, even if you have nothing, just showing your opponent you have an island that you're just going to play on turn two, and make them think about it, make them think about it for the rest of the game. Even that's all pretty good uh like it's not like a shock land where two life really matters all right uh i don't want to fight this jace yeah, as much as i would have preferred to get a creature into play there that is uh not a card i want to have to work through so they might just wish Luris into their hand this turn Oh, interesting. I actually do have the full lethal Pummelerino next turn, though if they have dead weight in their hand, that loses on the spot. I think I have to go for it, though. Wait, do I even have the full lethal Pummelerino? Because it would cost some amount of energy to make the mana I need. Alright, I'll just put them to the test right now. If they have like land drop, Luris, dead weight, I am not winning this game anyway. Bummer. So they're probably going to take Battle Rage or Rampager. Unless they can just kill Pummeler, because then they'll take Brawler. Though Rampager is ready to be a creature too. This hand is pretty juicy, not gonna lie. Alright, yeah, taking Rampager makes the most sense. So, are they playing with fire here? What are you doing? Let's draw Blossoming Defense. All right. So, I want to attune for a mountain. I guess I don't even really have a, a powerful attack here.
Yeah, stripping the Rampager was pretty strong. So if I had drawn a Hexproof spell there, that would have been pretty nice. Long Tusk Cub is, is a good one too, because that doesn't die to dead weight. As far as uh, top decks go, that one was reasonable. Eliminated, okay. Adlers is so scary. What a good magic card. I think the companion fix that costing three to get it in your hand is reasonable. Like I, I think that the companions are pretty cool at this point. Oh, you're Grixis. That makes it even worse for me. All right, come on, Blossoming Defense. Bummer. Blossoming Defense. You're killing me, Smalls. All right, I'll just play the nickel and dime game. So I lose that eventually to Luris. It's clear right now that I don't have any way to protect my creature. Oh, they just did nothing with their whole turn cycle. They played a land, no spell on their turn, no spell on my turn. I think they are respecting. I feel like they have one removal spell and they're trying to respect Blossoming Defense while using it. So can I please draw one? Uh... Alright, well, I'm going to start using Voltaic Brawler. So that turns on Battle Rage, the Trample Mode, just by being a Ferocious Creature. So I can make a 2, 4, 8 Double Strike. So if they go for a move on Brawler, like if they tap out to deal with Brawler, I can't actually kill them with Pummeler. Oh, that's not a tap out. Uh, I guess, let's see here. So I can go three times. One. Two. Three. All oh, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, all in. They floated black. Fatal push doesn't do it. Wow, yes. Make your move. That was fortunate. <laughs> Got away with one there, I'm not going to lie. All right, so this is definitely a matchup where I should not count on the combo, and I should just try to overload them. Uh, Magma Spray. Uh, lines up pretty well against Luris and Jace, but doesn't seem to do much against the rest of their deck. So that's that's in the maybe pile. Um, Rush of Adrenaline is out. I think the uh, Collision Colossus are out. I like Rampager for all the reasons I've said every other round. I don't think Shadow Spear is necessary in this matchup. So I could at this point. Basically, every card in my sideboard has utility. Like, I could have Glorybringer as just a haste threat that also kills Luris. I could have Cinder Vines if they want to settle into like a spell game where they're playing like Opt and Fatal Push and stuff. That'll eventually ping them for a lot of damage. Um, I could bring Magma Sprays, which answer Jace and Luris. Aether Sphere Harvester is a creature that's difficult to kill with sorcery speed removal. Uh, 
There, there's a lot to like here, so I don't think I need another creature. Uh, do I care about Battle Rage? I actually think just one more answer to Jason Luris makes sense. Like, I'm not going to cut my Harness Lightnings. But I don't want all four Magma Sprays either. Yeah, I'm just going to be this this creature deck and leaving in Battle Rages because, uh, like we saw that game, that's the card that can actually kill an opponent. All right, we have a one lander with a tune, <laughs> four blossoming defenses. Hell yes. Uh, if they thought seize this hand and take a tune, oh, we're at the mercy of the top deck. But I think that would be like pretty aggressive. I think they should take Bristling Hydra. But I wouldn't blame them for taking a tune. So they're going to have a lot of time to figure out what they want to do with this game because my hand is not blazing. Like if they take a tune, then I need to draw lands and two drops. This is a delight though. That might be too many of that effect. All right, they took the Attune. Let's draw another one. All right, drew a land. So we are going to play the game. Now it's time to uh, draw some, some creatures to protect with all these X-Brew spells. Uh, Valky, oh no. Yeah, now they can take my Hydra. Okay, yeah, that, that makes it very easy to not uh, think about Hydra with a tune. That's actually pretty embarrassingly easy. All right, Cub. What, is, what are the chances their four cards in hand are not a removal spell in their blue-black control deck? Pretty good, I hope. Just like wish Luris into your hand and pass the turn. <laughs> no chance. All right, I I have flooded on hexproof effects here. Really needed to attune for this hand to to really do the thing. All right, wise guy. My deck's got a sense of humor. So Valky can turn into Bristling Hydra next turn, but my opponent does not gain energy, so I don't think that matters a lot, other than it just being a 4-3 instead of a 2-1. So Harness Lightning still wipes it out. Magma Spray doesn't wipe it out anymore. Uh -huh. Oh, ho. I think I want to wait until I draw a land. Like my hand, all my hand does is make hexproof creature, make a creature hexproof. So I should play into that. They're probably gonna hydra up Valky here. Cuts the clock in half. Yep, hail hydra. So I want to draw a land, an untapped land, not Sheltered Thicket. And that gives me the best chance of doing anything this game. And I have a pretty short clock to do anything. Uh... So I could run out Pommeler, let it die, and then try to spike a land for a Hydra. But they already have a Hydra. All right, yeah, I think just being on the clock that I'm on, I don't have time to play around. Like, I, I had a one-turn window to play around, and it didn't work. I'm just dying quickly to this 4-3. My own 4-3. Betrayed. And they know my hand is 4 of this effect, so they... Would kill it while I'm tapped out if they could. So let's see. They didn't have an instant. They could have something like Trial of Ambition or Bloodsheet Thirst, which is a sorcery. 
but it's interesting that they obviously don't have an instant that can kill this. I mean, Deadweight is definitely a card in their deck with Luris. Alright, so they must be killing this thing, or else why would they attack? I guess Fatal Push also doesn't line up well against Pummeler right now. They have not demonstrated a way to get Revolt. Maybe their hand is just four Fatal Pushes and they're dead. Oh no, that's a lot of mana. Enter the God Eternals. All right, I can't beat that. Wow, that would be quite a card to uh, counter with a uh, one of those. Okay, so uh, I've now seen Valky on top of Jace and Luris, so more interested in Magma Spray. I think Battle Rage I'm actually less interested in. Uh, Glorybringer can hit a god a masked god eternal it can kill a valky that has become something big so all right i'm actually all the way off battle rage just more creatures okay So I think like two is the right number of hexproof effects to draw, not four. Though if I hadn't missed my land drops, that hand would still have worked. All right, just give me a functional hand, please. Uh, that's a one lander with no attune. All right, there's a three lander. I'm going to keep this and ship Harness Lightning. Yeah, Thoughtseize is just a really good card. And uh, Dylan did mention that when we were talking about the deck, that discard is bad. But just, I think, accepting the one-for-one -one trade and just sideboarding so you have more threats is the way to overpower discard not uh something strange like nephalia academy i think that's what the card is called all right i was about to say long tusk cub and there it is so now i have two drop three drop four drop like this is the kind of game that i want to present post board where i'm just presenting threats maintaining pressure So they have a swamp in their hand. Valky. Ding, 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 ding. Sideboard payoff. Give it to me. Yep. It doesn't matter what they take because it's just getting sprayed with magma. Liquid hot magma. For those of you who are uh, not 30 years old. That was an Austin Powers reference. All right, taking the Pummeler, sure. So I can attack, and if they block, I can cast Pummeler, but I brought in Magma Spray for a reason. I'm not going to not do it. I'm also not going to... Rampage for a random 4 damage right now. I think that's not what that card is for, especially with Pummeler already in hand. So right now they don't know about Glorybringer. Uh, Deadweight doesn't kill this anymore. Oh, we've seen Eliminate and Fatal Push that do. Kind of hope they just wish for Luris this turn and ship it back. Any point where I can pass my turn with two threats in play will be a good thing. Come on with the Valkies. All right, well, I have Glorybringer that will eventually answer this Valky, no matter what creature it is. 
They might take Rampager this time because they're close to making Valkyrie a 4-4. Four -four. But now Cub can just slam into Valky as a 3-3, and we're good there. Yep, like I said, they're j they just want the 4-4 four -four now. Make my attack before I play my land. I don't want them to know what I'm up to. Uh, it's kind of... A relief though to be able to just play out my cards like I don't have to bluff anything because they already know my hand there's there are no secrets so now a land is a good draw because it kills the Valky slash Gorklan Rampager whatever type of creature that is by the time my next turn comes around and uh, spells are good too I think every card in my deck is either a land that the two sheltered thickets are the only bad draws. Everything else can be cast by four mana or is a land that casts Glorybringer. What do we got? All right, Hydra, Hail Hydra. So I can make Long Tusk Cub into a 6 6. So I still have an attack here. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Just connect. Get paid. Build up that energy. I'll need it eventually. All right, and now a summoning a Hydra with four hexproof bubbles. So they're thinking pretty hard about this. They've left up this mana for so many turns now. Uh, they could have put Luris in hand. They can just morph into a 4-4 four -four in the end step with Valky if they want to. Though they know I'm sitting on Glorybringer. If their hand has like one counterspell in it, they might be thinking about, like, is it time to answer this or save it for Glorybringer? I kind of hope they just, like, eliminate Pummeler in response. If, they, if they're casting a spell, right, either Gust. Top or bottom? I actually think I want to bottom this. Even though it's good. Like... The land for Glorybringer is probably better. Or like some sort of pump or protection spell for Pummeler is also something I'm more interested in. Right, this fetch can turn on Fatal Push for Pummeler. All right, they didn't have it, interesting. They saw last game at least four copies of make target creature hexproof spells. So they should be playing around them while I'm tapped out if they can. And the fact that they haven't makes me think that they can't. Uh, they bottomed with opt. Now this Valky has actually been insane because uh, that's my my payoff with Pummeler. And this cub is doing doing work. I have a lot of energy. Extremely energized. And like damage and minus based removal is not gonna kill cub at this point. <laughs> Remember when I said anything except sheltered thicket? So I actually think I'm going to keep the Thicket. I'll put a little bit of energy in. So that takes it from a 7 turn clock to a 5 turn clock. 
if I go again, it'll be a four turn clock. All right, I'll stop at four four for now. So I can cycle Sheltered Thicket looking for something, or I could just play this lock in my Glorybringer. I'm going to cycle it. All right, yeah, I actually said that uh, I was going to play it and that would be better, but I actually don't think that it is. Like, hitting a two-drop here is pretty sick. Even, like, Languish doesn't kill Long Tusk Cub. And this is just another way to attack next turn, and they still have to be respecting the Glorybringer. Release to the Wind. Exile target, non-land permanent. For as long as that card remained to exile, its owner may cast it. Okay, so they're going to cast Valky, uh, or Tybalt next turn. Okay, so that's released to the Wind. I get it. But what does... Like, Tybalt is not enough to win this game. They need some sort of follow-up. Okay, so they're just drawing two cards. Uh, Bristling Hydra was my exile, and Fatal Push was theirs. If they have a land... Or they don't even need a land. They can just cast both. That's pretty nice. That was <laughs> actually just completely fucking insane. Honestly. Like, giant creature. They even get the Hexproof bubble because they're casting it and a removal spell with the four mana available. Wow. All right, I'm still not convinced that's enough. Like Pummeler is thick and a creature has, or a, a permanent has not, they're not revolted. Okay. So they prefer to leave up Fatal Push plus other stuff to Right. Is it Glorybringer time? Or is it Rampager time? No, I've been playing. I've been waiting for this Glorybringer forever. And this Jace will mess me up. Eventually. Alright, I'm just making my attacks. So if I exert, they get Revolt. If I don't exert, it doesn't matter because Fatal Push can still kill a good creature. Alright, so now Fatal Push can hit Pummeler. But Cub is also lethal, so 4, 8, 12. I can double, 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 which makes eight. All right, that's gone. Four, eight, nine, ten. Exaxes. Wait, wh what just happened? Did I count wrong? Four, eight, nine, ten. Weren't they at ten? What happened? Did I did I count wrong? Was there first strike damage involved? I thought they were at 10. <laughs> I don't know what just happened, but fuck. I could have plussed Pummeler again to get that damage through. What the hell? That was weird and annoying. Yeah, Pummeler could have pushed for a lethal. Why did I think they were at a different life total? All right, Blood Crypt and Aether Hub. Okay, that was a much worse Valky that time. And they know I have Rampager. That was strange. I'm going to have to go back to the tape for that. Okay, they can re Valky. This also turns on. Fatal push if they have one. A second emblem in case I destroy the first one. It's 
so they hit dig through time and stomping ground so they can't cast the dig through time though they there is an aether hub in exile all right so one despite somehow miscounting combat math last turn four plus four plus two is ten they must have been at 14 and i just miscounted all right <laughs> whatever we got away with the win playing for a positive record let's go into the final round it's the final round, and I'm on the play with among the most functional hands I've seen all day, and I'm against some sort of Yorion deck. I'm going to keep. So I think I'm going to Stomping Ground Shadow Spear here. Just get that into play. It might not matter much against Yorion, but there it is. So I want the green version. All right, coming out blazing. So removal spell, yup. I guess I'll choose this one. Okay, so this is actually interesting. I think that casting Brawler and protecting it with these things like drawing a two drop gives me the window to find another land oath of kaya three damage to any target so i have to wait for them to target or else they can just go face snakeskin veil get that permanent buff if i draw a land i can jam pummeler Nice. So, yeah, I can afford to pay for this and still pummel twice next turn. All right, yeah, this has lined up beautifully. Let's do the damn thing. Not even close to Yorion. Oh, fuck, there's that. Okay. So I have the Hexproof card. Let's see if they sack Trial to get the uh, Apparition, or if they sack Oath to do something for four. It's looking like Apparition. Oh, it's night. Okay. I am proof of hexing. Oh, that's fucked. Okay, so I want to give this more stats and trample. If I attack, I can buff this. Yeah, this looks lethal to me. And I can do the harness lightning trick. It's worth more as three energy than it is as killing knight. All right, so pump, pump, that's eight, seven. All right, so they're not quite dead. Harness lightning here, pay zero. Boing. That was definitely the best hand I've had in this entire league. Smooshed. All right, well, we're familiar with this sort of strategy, so. Spellbreaker, Cindervine, Bristling Hydra. More of this. More creatures, less uh, removal, and less pump spells. Rush of Adrenaline, Shadow Spear, even though it was solid there, is not actually what I want here. A Harness Lightning is medium, but certainly as text. So Cinder Vines is probably just way better. Battle Rage can kill by itself.
Uh, collision can kill Yorion, but I mean, so can Harness Lightning, and Harness Lightning does other stuff too. Though, is Collision just better than Harness Lightning? Though, Lightning taking out something like Skyclave Apparition could matter a lot. And I did like the Glorybringers last time because of Skyclave Apparition. And maybe I'm just off Harness Lightning and it's Glorybringers time to shine. Though, I did get bricked by a Yorion. So, in the previous match, it, it was like, can I kill Yorion or not? So, maybe... I want max collisions, and I could lose Battle Rage, or a Rampager, or even a Pummeler, honestly. I think I like all of the Trample spells. Maybe one Glory Bringer and leave in both Battle Rages. That might be reasonable. Or maybe Cinder Vines is just too much of a a dream. On the play, maybe I'll bring in the second one. But alright, let's go. I guess Cinder Vines is a lot better than I gave it credit for there, because if you can just sit it in play in the first three turns and pick off their uh, enigmatic incarnation before it does anything then their deck doesn't seem like it functions. This hand is also very good, though. Alright, Attune. I think I'll just get another. I'll get a Mountain. It, it doesn't really matter. I have so much mana right now of all my colors. And Mountain, I guess, lets me play the Brawler painlessly this turn. Ooh, oh, okay. Omen of the Sea. I thought it was getting counterspelled. We haven't actually seen a counterspell other than the one Aether Gust in this whole league. So, drawing Spellbreaker was insane because that was a just another. Threat on curve. We can keep this party going. Two drop, three drop, four drop. Alright, I like haste mode here. Haste. And then I think I like second spellbreaker with defense back up next turn rather than Hydra. I guess it'll depend on what they do. Ooh, that's awkward. That's not how they wanted to spend mana when they're under the gun like this. Oh, that's so cool. Is that the Seb McKinnon or the... Oh, that's the new... The new one. Just like the... I forget what it's called, but it's like the unrelenting badassity of basic lands or something like that. Right, yeah, I'm going to do the Blossoming Defense game here. And just play slightly off curve with more protection. Yeah, that Nylea's presence, not where they wanted to be last turn, I promise. But I did shock in Stomping Ground, so they should expect something here. Like, this isn't just a mana laying around that's extra. I paid for this dearly with my, my blood and sweat. You rock the Desecrated. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, it triggers again. Okay. So I can just ram into that thing with the Blossoming Defense. Like, removing Yorok is going to be pretty important. It does have Death Touch and Life Link, so they get a lot out of that exchange, but it's fine. At least they don't have Yorok. And now I have a Hexproof, Hydra, two Bubbles. Uh, 
Uh, apparition, sure. They're going to have to go after Spellbreaker. So they're starting to stabilize, but hopefully I've maintained enough pressure. Uh, that Yorion's going to be pretty strong. It's going to draw a lot of cards. I don't even want to play a Voltaic Brawler. Oh, okay. Now I do. I was going to say I don't want to play it because it'll just die to this Kaya's Oath of Kaya. But now that they gave me an extra creature, I do want to keep pushing. So they're going to scry two twice, draw three cards, and lightning helix something while making a 4-5. This is a solid Yorion. I need to draw a Teamer Battle Rage. That's what I want right now. Oh fuck, it's so much worse than I thought. Yeah, I'm actually just going to lose everything now. That snuck in with the perfect mana. Now they can, as long as they sequence their triggers correctly, they can uh, clear my entire board. I'm so jealous of these Yorion decks though. That is what I would be choosing to play if I wasn't given this deck to play instead. All right. Do you stack your t triggers to correctly? Uh, yes. So, all right, they did it right, so I'm dead. I guess I can take one draw step, but I don't know what I'm drawing towards. I'm not even going to take a draw step. I'm just dead. Doesn't matter. All right, on the play for the for game three here. Yeah, that doesn't do it. So on the play, what do I want to be doing? I think the Cinder Vines come in and Glorybringer is looking pretty expensive. Still like Battle Rage, still like Collision. Yeah, I think this is is as good as it gets. It has a plan. Let's let's do it. Come on, good hand. All right, we're waiting for them to reveal their Yorion. Maybe they'll forget, and then they won't be your Yorion deck. That would be awkward in real life if you just like obviously have an 80 card deck and forget to reveal your companion for game three when you've revealed it for the first two games. I wonder how that judge call would go. Uh, this is a solid hand. I'm going to keep it. All right. Yes, pay two life. Let's attune. Get myself a forest. So have the battle rage. That's the cheese factor that I might need to win this game because they are extremely well suited to win the long game. Right, that's glass pole mimic. They have a lot of sweet arts in their deck. All right, Cub. It can go to 3-3 already if it needs to because of a tune. The classic uh, Sly Curve here from Kaladesh Standard. So I don't think that their damage is going to... Their removal is going to be damage-based. All right, they just didn't have removal at all. That's even better. Ooh, interesting. I'm still going to jam Pummeler, but Cinder Vines is exciting, and I have the three mana to just turn it into... Uh, straight up disenchant. All right, put you to the test. I have a double double plus battle rage. That is not lethal though. That's eight damage. Oath. All right. So that can't kill cub, but it doesn't need to. Come on, land. Nice. Uh, so if I pay twice, I can still have two bubbles on my Hydra, and pushing for two extra damage does matter.
Oh, I could have paid three times because of the attack trigger, so I missed a damage there. I was ready to go all the way down to uh, six energy, so if I'm ready to commit to that, then there's no reason not to push the extra little bit there. Trial of Ambition. At this point, so let's see. Um, I have Battle Rage. So I should just have lethal, right? Uh, I can make this a 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm going to sack the Hydra. And I don't think there's any free spells in Pioneer. Oh, I even give a double strike. So I get two energy, and then I can pump it again before regular damage. Battle Rage. Bump it again. For good measure. All right. Long Tusk Cub. All right, we put up a positive record with Pummeler, and that included some rough matchups, like the Control decks, the Yorian decks, the Nibdalite decks. Wow, those are good, powerful. Uh, I also uh, made that one... Uh, sequencing error where I protected Long Tusk Cub instead of investing in a Pummeler combo, so I, I lost a game there that I didn't need to. So this is certainly a competitive deck. Like This does hang in Pioneer, and for, for $15 on Magic Online, uh, what else could you ask for? Uh, I imagine there's some tuning that could be done. Rush of Adrenaline was, I don't think it was ever cast, and it was boarded out a lot. Shadow Spear was actually pretty good. Uh, I do like that. Just a permanent source of trample. And Lifelink didn't matter much in these matchups we had, but there are like Burn and Prowess decks in this format, so I can see where it would be good. I think I would turn Rush of Adrenaline into the other two Collision Colossus. Just having two more outs to a Yorion or a niv -Mizzet, plus two more uh, gigantic pump spells. This should probably just be a four of. Uh, Battle Rage, I'm not sure if that should be a 4 of. Uh, like, what What do you cut? Like, Battle Rage doesn't really improve combat unless you're comboing off. So, I, I think I like Battle Rage as a 2 of. And I like leaving it in, even in matchups where removal is plentiful. Uh, the sideboard, I don't know if we actually need Aether Sphere Harvester... But again, like I said, we didn't actually play against any of the burn or, or prowess or aggressive decks where this sh absolutely shines. I love the Spellbreakers, love the Hydra. Glorybringer was good. I actually like, I'm pretty confident that these 13 cards are good. And then Aether Sphere Harvester is a meta call. So this was a fun deck to play. Thank you, Dylan, for submitting it. I hope that my tuning has improved it for you. And... Good luck in the queues. Uh, anyone else trying to play some Budget Pioneer, this is a good way to do it. Everyone, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.